Hello and welcome back. So in this video we're going to look at a problem dealing with a uniform probability distribution. So this is uh, the, the first one that we've looked at that is a continuous probability distribution rather than the discrete probability distributions that uh, we've discussed in some, uh, some of the previous videos. So one of the biggest differences uh, between the discrete distributions and these continuous distributions uh, is how we interpret the, the functional form of the distribution. So when we were looking at some of the discrete probability distributions, uh, we had uh, some function f of x equal to you know, whatever that uh, that discrete function was. And these could always be interpreted as the, the probability of x events occurring. And so it was uh, relatively straightforward to interpret the output um, of any of those functions that, that we were working with. With the continuous probability distributions. Now, those are no longer probabilities. And this becomes the functional form of what is called the density function. And so now, when we're trying to obtain probabilities, we're no longer obtaining probabilities of a specific value. Rather than we're obtaining probabilities that our variable takes on uh, a range of values. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about why that is. So let's uh, let's just get into this problem, uh, th and then we'll we'll sort of see. Uh, actually, part part B is going to bring this to light uh, of this problem. So here we have a, a random variable x is uniformly distributed between uh, two and five. So in order to obtain the probability density function uh, of this uniform probability distribution, so in this case f of x. Uh, the formula is probably one of the simplest that uh, that we've seen. This is a over, uh, sorry, <laughs> one over b minus a, where b is the upper limit of that distribution, and a is the lower limit of that distribution. So in this case, that uh, probability density function is nothing more than uh, five minus two, and so this is one third. So when we're going to draw this, so for part A, here we have f of x on that y-axis, and then along the x-axis are the different values uh, that, of course, x can, can assume. And so x is limited to the values between 2 and 5, and uh, f of x, the value of that um, probability density function, is one third. And so we have a uniform distribution that looks something like this. So there's our, there's our answer for part A. That's what our probability density function uh, looks like. Now, part B. So this one is asking a question that we could have uh, quite easily have solved with uh, any of the discrete probability distributions, what's the value that that variable takes on a specific number? Uh, and and that was, you know, we throw that number into the probability uh, function and we obtain the value uh, for that. Now what we're going to be doing though is calculating the probability uh, that a variable takes on a specific range of values. The reason being is that because this variable is continuous, meaning it can take on any value between 2 and 5, we'll find that the probability of any one specific value occurring is actually 0. And the reason for that is that if we calculate the following, so if we calculate the probability that x is equal to 2.8, well, this is the same as saying what's the probability that x is less than or equal to, uh, sorry, greater than or equal to 2.8, or less than or equal to 2.8. Why? Because it can take on any value. It can take on the value of 2.8000001. Uh, it can take on any value to any decimal place. It is entirely continuous. Now, in calculating the probabilities, what we need to, to to determine is the value of that probability density function 
times, again, this is going to be the notation we're going to use as b times a, where this is our value b and this is our value a. So in this case, our probability density function is one third times 2.8 minus 2.8, and we see right away that that is a value of zero. So in this exercise, uh, the probability that x is exactly 2.8 uh, is zero, and that's because there's an infinite number of values that x can take between two and five, so the value, uh, so the probability associated with any one of those is effectively zero. So moving on, uh, compute uh, the probability that x is between two and a half and three and a half. So again, I can use the same calculation, uh, except now, let's just change our values in here. So now we're looking at uh, between 2.5 and 3.5. So when we calculate our density function is one third, 3.5 minus 2.5, so that's one third times one. So there's our probability is equal to one third. So there we have it, there's a 0.33 probability, or say a 33% chance that it takes on the value between two and a half and three and a half. Uh, and the equality is in there as well. And in fact, the equality uh, in, that, in that problem, notice this one, we have the equality as part of it, and this one, uh, the equality is not included. And again, it doesn't change the nature of that calculation uh, whatsoever. If we move on to part C, and so now in part C, this is gonna be between 4.2 and three, getting rid of those equality portions doesn't change this problem because as we saw the probability of it being perfectly equal to any one value is actually zero. So whether that equality is part of the problem or not, it doesn't change the nature of the calculations uh, whatsoever. Here I'll just go through and rewrite uh, our, our values. This is again one third. This is 4.2 minus three and so this is one third times uh, 1.2, and one third times 1.2, let me grab a calculator. <coughs> so point th one, point 0.3, oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Bring this down here, there we go. 0.333 times 1.2 equals, so let's call that point 0.4. 0.4, good. So probability again, that it takes on a value within that range uh, is 0.4. And being a perfectly uniform distribution, uh, the values, the actual values in these problems uh, doesn't, doesn't have any impact um, on what our solution will be. And by that I mean the probability, oops, the probability between 2.5 and 3.5, as we saw in part B, this will be exactly equal to the probability between, say, one and two, because it's perfectly uniform. So what matters here is the width of, of that interval. It'll be a constant probability for any width, any interval of a, of a given width. So that, that kind of makes it a little bit uh, easier to, to deal with because we've got that uniformity. It's a uniform distribution. Uh, okay, part E, uh, compute the expected value. Let me clean this up. So these formulas, um, their derivation is actually a little bit beyond the scope of the course, uh, surprisingly enough. They look quite simple, but to derive them is a little bit more tedious. The expected value is just b minus a over two, uh, where again, here's our b in this case, and here's our a. So this is just going to be five minus two over two, so that's uh, three. So that'll be a value of 1.5 for the expected value. And the variance, this is b minus a squared, over 12. Now the value 12, don't worry about where that comes from, that's just part of the 
the the um, formula for this for this parameter of the distribution. So here I have five minus two squared divided by twelve. And let me get my calculator here. This is going to be uh, 3 squared divided by 12, so 0.75. So there we have it. There's all of our values for this um, fairly straightforward uh, uniform probability distribution. So I hope that helped. The calculations here aren't uh, exceedingly tedious. Uh, sometimes there's a, a little bit of a struggle between dealing with these equalities because it's hard to, hard to kind of wrap your head around this notion that there's a zero probability of any specific value occurring. That's just the nature of these continuous probability distributions uh, and how they differ from the discrete functions. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.